here. So let's introduce damage control. Episode two, episode two. So I'm going to go into detail right now on why I think it is not beneficial for brokers to basically- Hold up, Anthony. We need to introduce our show. Is that what it is now? Is this a show? This is a- <laughs> damage control episode two. So what is damage control? Please tell everybody. So tell control their folks is every single event that we do, Melinda, myself, we're always uh, inundated with questions afterwards. Uh, everybody comes up to us and, and starts asking questions about what about this scenario? How do we do that? Or what do you think of this? And so this is the concept of the show is there's so many moving parts in our business that we're not taking the time to analyze these moving parts and digest what we're doing and really analyze the fact that, look, here's the problem. Here's how you solve it and move forward. People get stuck on all of these problems and we call it damages. They're, they're, we're, we're controlling the damage that's going to suck up your energy, your time uh, throughout the day. And then the next thing you know, it's five o'clock, you've done one damn thing. So yeah. the, point of this, <laughs> the point of this show is to hopefully help real estate agents and everybody, lenders, title companies, attorneys, on solutions on why they're stalling their sales cycle and how to overcome those objections. I love it, right? Yes, so you'll wow. learn Rosenfield. How are you, man? things about the substance of the deals, right? The, the content of title lending and contracts and all that stuff. You'll also learn some practical negotiating tools. You'll also learn some sales and marketing, so all that good stuff. So let's get cracking. I think that um, one of the practical things we're going to discuss uh, today that we've had some challenges in the past dealing with things like this is about recommending other vendors to, to the, your deal, to your transaction. So why don't you elaborate on that, Anthony? This is something that is, it, it hits home with me because <laughs> look, I understand the liability aspect. I know if I'm a broker, I'm going to say, you got to recommend three, two people, you know, go with your, you know, go with the best people. Uh, and they do it for liability purposes. And I get that. I've yet to see any verbiage anywhere that says that we need to do that. Okay. I, I understand that, you know, we're not mandated to use anyone's financial services or title companies per RESPA, but who makes this rule up? Who's saying that you've got to give out to three or four or five people uh, your business card and say these, you know, choose. So here, here's a couple of analogies that, that I'd like to go into. I'm not saying that I'm LeBron James. Okay. <laughs> Right. But let's just say that we're, we're pretty darn good at what we do. We just got, you know, kudos from the Clinton Williams team. Thank you so much. One of my awesome agents, they said, you guys are remarkable as a team. Their entire office uses us and they have other, you know, lenders that they, they obviously work with. But if we're LeBron James and we're winning games and championships, okay, uh, granted he, yeah, he should have won more then why aren't you using LeBron James? Okay. Why, why are you not taking that person and saying, look, this is a person I would refer you to. Why does it have to be three different other people? All right. If, if you need someone to shoot a three, we know LeBron can shoot it, but we know Steph Curry is, is amazing. So I'm going to, I'm going to pick Steph all day long because uh, he's a good, you know, three point shooter. So I get the concept of maybe, you know, different type of niche programs or different type of, you know, scenarios, but you should ask your lender, right, Melinda, you should ask your lender or real estate agent, what do you specialize in? I don't specialize in foreign national loans. Do I do them? We do, but I'm a brain surgeon. I'm not doing shoulder or knee surgery. I'm doing what I'm good at. And if, if you know, or understand, you know, your lender to that point saying, look, I know he's amazing with FHA, VA, conventional USDA. That's his core programs. He knows everything inside and out. This is his bread and butter. Then that's the person I would recommend. That's like saying you, Melinda, no personal injury. You're a real estate attorney. Okay. Why am I going to use you for personal injury? But doesn't it go more than that, Anthony? Like, remember, remember the analogy that we spoke about uh, with, with the things on the menu. So 
yes, there's LeBron James, but there's also Dwayne Wade and there's also all those other guys. And there's, we, there's a lot of good people out there, right? But sometimes if you have to pick who your next player is as a client, that's like too many mm-hmm. options, right? Like when I, go to, when I go to a restaurant and I have a list on the menu and I like to eat, I'm gonna look at this, I'm like, I don't know what to order. And then I go to my friend, I go, friend, tell me, you've been here before, what should I order? Because I can't make a decision. And I just need someone sometimes to tell me because I can't make a decision for myself because I don't even know. I've never been there before. I've never bought a house before. I've never been to this restaurant before. I've never had to pick a team for a basketball game, right? So the idea is sometimes you got to nudge and too many options are no good. So well, I get the idea of having a neutral. I think that a neutral kind of options to be to provide because you don't want to steer because there is that rule, right? We do can't give too many options to then create confusion and uh, indecision. And I think even more importantly is they end up like having t- information overload from so many people and then they're trying to shop and then they don't make a decision and it's just delaying and remember last episode we were talking about how time kills deals and it's like overkill and then it's caught taking too much time to make a decision so that's kind of my angle about it is usually i when i'm given i when i'm asked for a recommendation i'll give one unless they specifically ask for more than one i'll have that conversation no, what type of who are you looking it. for i try to i try to match personalities i try to match like, what do I think is going to work best? I try to match. Also, like, I try to share, right? So uh, it, depending on the scenario. So at the end of the day, I think unless they specifically ask and I have that conversation, do you, would, do you want a recommendation? Yes. Okay. I can give, I have a couple people. Do you want one or do you want a couple? And usually they'll just say, just give me your, give me one person for now. And that's usually how it ends up going. Give me your best person, they're going to say. Yeah. So <laughs> exactly. they don't say it like that, but they, they do. And then I make Who's them the warm- person you really like the most. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't, what I don't do is give a cold intro. I know you just kind of touched on that, like how I introduce people or how I give a referral is never like uh, uh, here's their phone number, give them a call. It's always a joint email. It starts with a joint, it actually usually starts with a conversation to whoever is receiving the referral. And I say, hey, I'm gonna be sending you this person. This is their story. I gave them your info, shout to them, but I'm doing an email intro. So then I do the email intro and I give like, for example, hey, Anthony, here's so-and-so, he's looking to buy or refinance, uh, yada, yada, yada. Here's his phone number, email, et cetera. Hey, buyer, here's Anthony, and he's, he'll take great care of you. I've worked with him many times, yada, yada, yada. Phone number for Anthony, email for Anthony, happy connecting, keep me in the loop. And that's kind of how I do it. And then I always obviously check in afterwards to make sure everything's going smoothly. But by doing that, that warm intro, it gives the contact information to both people. And the reality is, even if that buyer doesn't follow up, I know my lender will follow up, right? Anthony, Accountability. For sure. Accountability. Exactly. So, so that's how I do it. And it always helps. But even when there is two, even when people do want more than one options, which it happens, um, I, I don't give three, I'll give two. And then I'll, I'll try to give them different, like differences as to what they do differently. And I'll let the, I'll let my, the people I recommend know, Hey, listen, they asked for a couple names just so you know, so be ready for that. So that you also know what to expect in terms of the conversation and where they're coming from. The reason why this touches home is because we get so many clients that call us and they're pre-approved with other financial institutions and they're not even pre-approved. We look at their scenarios and we're like, what the heck is going on? But we've been working on this for two months and we figure it out in 24 hours. Um, I, I just feel like you're not controlling your lead. And if you're not controlling your lead, you're not controlling your paycheck. You have no control over your, your destiny basically. And you're leaving it in someone else's hands. Uh, that's always stuck with me and it makes me difficult to digest because a lot of these consumers, they're having so much information. It's information overload. It's information indigestion is what I call it. Agile in Italian. I'm burping up so much information. <laughs> so if it's the wrong information, I don't, I don't know what to do. So therefore I opt out. I don't want to do anything. It's not meant to be this. It's in God's hands. It's not meant to be. No, that, it's just yeah. overwhelming for them, right? Because I think that's what it is too, is it's an overwhelming process. We, I think sometimes we take that for granted since we're in the business and we do this every day. Like for me, and as this contract is and as this contract, I, I looked at them every day, all day long, um, title commitments, whatever, right? I, the process, I know the process, I've through this process so many times. 
but for someone that just first time buying or someone that hasn't bought in a while, like they, the system has changed, everything's changed and there's so many people involved and then we have to manage personalities and expectations. So that's definitely, you know, personalities is key. We've got Bob in the other room and he's an older fellow. Everyone knows Bob, but see a lot of people think that we're too aggressive on some points. Oh, he's so intense. I'm a chameleon. I adapt in every situation. So I understand sales, the sales process. You can take someone who knows programs and rates and knows that inside and out. If they don't know the sales process, that's the problem. Let me share something real quick. I'm going to share my screen. Can you see something? Can you see this? I, yes, we can. All right. So this is, if they're overwhelmed with information, that's not the problem. Your problem is what you're looking at right now on my screen. This is the objections that they're, they're embedded with all this crap. They're fear, they're uncertain. There's min, uh, misinformation, there's lack of information. It's their upbringing. No, you've got to bring in, daddy says, bring in 20%. You got to do 20%. Who the hell's got 20%? And why are they doing that? Okay, to avoid mortgage insurance. It's a tax deduction, you know? So at the end of the day, it, you know, if, if you're making more than 109,000, you're not getting the write off. If you're under 109,000, then keep the mortgage insurance. Rates are so low. This is the objections that most of your leads have. So now I've got to say, okay, I need to talk to three lenders. And now I'm, you know, but this person is saying FHA, the other person is saying conventionally, see where I'm going with this? Yeah. So that's the problem. Now, now you've gotten yourself into a pickle and you're wondering why none of your leads are closing. And then the liability aspect is back on you. Well, you recommended this person. I don't know. Maybe we should underwrite files up front. Yeah, that would yeah. eliminate a lot of those. That's, that's what we're doing here, but not too many people want to do that. It's, it's, it's costly. Um, I, I just think that if you're not solidifying that bond and that relationship, Melinda, it's like a marriage, right? You, you need to keep working on the marriage. If I got three girlfriends, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, life is great. Dude, I don't have anything. I, I don't have a, fa a sound foundation that I'm building, a family that I'm building. You and I do this monthly. I'd say every week we do this. What are your numbers? We go over our numbers every single week. The reason for that is we're growing. If we're not growing, the, re the relationship's not growing. Yeah, we're closing loans, you and I, but how do we get from A to B? That's the biggest thing. That's another uh, issue that I have is your lender or real estate agent might be closing, but the next following year, is it the same numbers? Is it less? Is it only up one? Why? Analyze that. It's a, it's a really important thing to analyze. So you want to jump into talking about like knowing your numbers. I think that's like a super sure. important thing. Um, so I always say, know your numbers. Listen, it's not easy to reflect on our numbers, right? Sometimes it's not always the prettiest thing. It's not always easy to reflect on things that we've done wrong, right? Or done, done right is easy, right? But then it's, it's, it's when it's done wrong that you're like, why am I not making the money that I, that I want to be making? What's going, what's going wrong? Or I'm closing so much. We're so busy. Why am I not feeling the benefits of that yet? And so by going through and analyzing whether it's what you're spending um, or, or your production or what did you do last month to make, to make it that this month we opened, you know, 10 files yet last week. But what did I do last month? It's not about what I did last week because that, that's like the fruits of labor from the months before. And it's not the fruits of the labor of last week right? There's the labor of actually opening those files, but like that's, that's the key. And that's what you have to understand. So we have, we actually started implementing uh, uh, the, some of the systems from this book called traction, which I learned about from Sylvia and her husband over at max home inspection. They implement the system. It's a beautiful thing. We're going to have them on the show coming up soon. So the awesome. for that, we'll also be having guests. Awesome. Sean's awesome. Sylvia's awesome. And Sean agrees me with this, man. Hopefully he chimes in. Ah, let's three, see. I don't know if he's watching. Should we invite him to watch? <laughs> invite, invite his ass on this show. Yeah, we'll get him on the show. But they have, they, they're very, like, I was driving with Sylvia back from the Women's Council um, state meetings that we had in January. And she was like, yeah, we need this many inspections, this many calls, this many. And she was like spewing it out. I'm like, wow. She knows her numbers. She knows her numbers. And I don't know my numbers that good. 
So that inspired me to like work on that. So now we, we have our weekly meetings with my team every, every Monday, right before this, we had right before uh, this morning at 930, we had our, our team meeting. And part of that is everyone has to come up with their numbers. So we have a couple numbers. How many files do we open? How many files do we close? How many marketing events did I do? How many one-on-one? -on -one? How many referrals did I give out? Because don't forget, this world is based on relationships, right? So even yeah. if it's not necessarily in the real estate direct space to a lender or realtor or something like that, I could still give a lot of other referrals out there. And whether it's and that, 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 that like is something that's just like the giver's gain mentality, right? So we, we track how many referrals we give out. We track how many overdue tasks, if any, we have in our, in our workflow. So I could see where is the, where is the pain point? Is somebody have more than the other? Is that where the prob where is the problem coming from so that we can give back to that person more support or change things around? So knowing and reflecting on your business is super important. Anthony, what do you guys do? We, we implement systems. Um, I just showed you yesterday how many people viewed our you know, damage control and how many people actually skim through it, watch the videos, the content. I'm analyzing. I'm constantly stalking and analyzing, um, you know, the numbers. And that's, that's how you're going to grow and get better and, uh, you know, obviously focus on, um, you know, building your business. But ironically, emails, 26% people are actually not reading their emails. But in this case, that was where we got most of our people to sign up through damage control. So, um, you know, social media is amazing. It works. Uh, and obviously people are chiming in right now, but, uh, for the most part, I would say, you know, emails are, uh, are key in this, uh, in this scenario to touch base with what you were just saying, the delivery is very important. Um, you know, you were saying that your delivery in the beginning is different. You do a warm transfer. I think part of the reason the three lenders are given or three real estate agents are given is the accountability aspect of it saying, look, I don't want to help be held responsible if you know, shit hits the fan. You give me a Cliff Notes version when you send me a deal. All of my good agents do this. They call me up and I've got a scenario. Before I call you with this client on the phone, a, B, C, and D is the issue. Okay, done. What's the interest rate? Interest rate's 4.65. All right. Now I know that I got to go lower than that because I'm going to make that real estate agent look like God's gift. You're, you're handing me something. I need to do something back to make you look like that hero, right? So it's that delivery and that approach. Uh, that's important. So if you're not building on that, you're not building your relationship with your lender or your real estate agent. Uh, if I give a lead out to three real estate agents and Monday, Wednesday, Friday, they're going out home hunting, who are they going to use? So, you know, very important back to systems. We know all of our numbers. I've got everything posted in these. I've got a post right there of, you know, exactly what we want to, you know, try to close this month, 35 units. That's the goal. Right now we have 20, hopefully 20 uh, will close. But the, the concept is, is we're constantly growing and understanding who our relationships are with and you know, where we need to get better. But it's all about systems. We, we could have a whole 30 minutes on systems and, and what we do. <clears throat> so. Next time. Um, so one more thing I wanted to touch because it was a, an issue that came up last week in a couple of my deals is FERPTA. And I want to bring it up because I need everyone to understand because when you have a foreign seller and you're doing that so let me let me back up before i jump in let me not get so excited and let me let me start from basics ferpta is a federal irs regulation that requires us to withhold depending on the deal a certain amount from the buyer from the sellers proceeds to make sure that they pay their capital gains that's Foreigners were selling their property, taking up to their home country and not paying their gains. So the IRS said, like in law school, they teach us, like learn the public policy behind the law so you could understand really the purpose of it and why it's being enforced a certain way and you could better understand it. So they were taking off, not paying their gains. So now they're withholding a certain amount to make sure that they pay their gains. They file their return, they pay their gains. Okay, there are exceptions to this, but the reality is it's very particular. So you need someone, you know, you need to make sure you have an account and a closing agent that understands it. The biggest misconception is if it's under $300,000, it does not need to be withheld. 
that is not true in and of itself. There is an and in there. It needs to be under 300,000 and the buyer needs to use as a residency. So what does that mean? That means your seller cannot be an entity. It can't be an investor. It can't be at home. If they plan to rent the property full time on a 12 month lease, they cannot sign, they cannot do that deal in that way. So where the issue becomes is, is not letting sellers know upfront what those things, what that means. You know, if you don't give them the heads up and then the first time they hear about this is on the closing statement, they're going to be pissed. And just like anything, what is your, what's your procedure? How do you do it? Well, ideally when the property is being listed, I'm usually not involved in that process yet in the process yet. Right. The, The agents should be advising their sellers just so you know, since you are a foreign and not a resident for tax purposes, which is different than like your green card, okay? Um, basically, you're, we're going to have to withhold on average 15% of your gross proceeds. Now, but I didn't make that much money on this deal. Doesn't make, so there's ways around it and like that are more than what we can teach here in this, in this video. But there's ways to uh, avoid the withholding through a withholding certificate. There's ways to get around it with the residency uh, this exception that we just spoke about. But you need, they need to be aware up front in the beginning that it's a possibility that this would happen and what that entails and that they're going to have to get an accountant and then there's going to be paperwork to file etc so if you don't and they hear about it from the first time from me they're going to be pissed right so and then you're you're, you're going to lose the deal or it's sometimes i've i had a deal last week like if we don't find a way around it the seller won't sell are you serious yep they, they'll find somebody else basically another buyer so in these scenarios, we need to make sure that our sellers are properly guided because we don't want that to be happening, you know, in the, in the end stages of the game. And then it causes a problem for everybody. Right. So. So that goes back to three real estate agents and lenders. That, but that goes back to setting up the right expectation. That's all it is. That's all, that's all that's, it is. That's man. like the main theme is setting up the right expectations. Um, because if the clients are with the right expectations up front, same thing like Anthony, have you heard? Oh my God, the buyer is outside with their moving truck. Like we need the keys, but they, you know, the closing's on Friday at like five o'clock. Yeah. So what are the expectations there that could have been done better? Listen, just so you know, it's not the best idea to be planning a move in on the day of closing because anything can happen. Yeah. Right. I, so, I, I agree and be with- ready for something to happen. So if you can avoid having those movers there on the day of closing, let's avoid it because that's just the reality of, of real estate. I had a seller last week. He was pissed because the buyer, buyer's loan got delayed from one Friday all the way to the next, you know, the next week, a whole week delay. And they were, you know, I said, listen, this, unfortunately, there's nothing we could do about it right now. This is the reality situation. The lender needs some more days. And let me tell you, he was not, I don't want to hear about this. This is how the industry is. But the reality is if that's, that is, it's not the industry, but like, it's not the industry, but it is Anthony. You need to have expectations with your sellers and your buyers that things happen at the end and don't go open a credit card. And, um, you know, even though the, the loan is approved, anything can happen. Or even though your title is clear now, things can pop up in our update these, these discussions, if they are had in the beginning, they will make it for a smooth. If, I, if I'm a good, if I'm a good real estate agent or a good lender, I'm going to, prov- I'm going to actually provide them enough information to educate them. That's what Gary V says, the content, our systems, any move you make do's and don'ts, why they shouldn't do this. Uh, don't go left, go right. I educate the consumer to the point where they understand before they know more about the situation than most people do, than most real estate agents do in all due respect, or most lenders because of the content that goes out, the videos, the text messages. We just had a scenario. We closed the spot approval. Um, Clinton's like, dude, your team's amazing, blah, 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 blah. 45 days this took, mind you. We came across a lot of scenarios that now we understand. What did we do? We just launched a condo cheat sheet, encrypted, copyrighted as well. 
but I did that because I understood. I was like, this is badass. This information's priceless. Those who want to take it to the next level, that information now, if I can teach that to a real estate agent to what anticipate and to expect, that thing can close in 21 days. Okay, so it's taking the content in and analyzing that content and then delivering it on a silver platter. You know how many times I get, Anthony, your team has given us more information in 24 to 48 hours than this person in one month. Why is that? Why is that? We're not God's gift over here. We take things to another level with systems, automation, and educating that uncertain client, that uncertainty that's embedded into their head. It's, it's the DNA that they, it's their upbringing. It's, it's not 1944 anymore that you got to do 20% down and educating them on why they should do it. Here's the roadmap. This is what you need based on you, not your dad or mom or your cousin or uncle buck. This is you. So right. I just, I, I, you know, I, I beg to choose, I just, I beg to differ on all of that. I mean, I get where you're coming from. Um, but I think, you know, if you take constructive criticism well, and you want to learn and you want to understand, because I can get better, we can all get better. How do we get better? It's taking that course of action and, and moving forward. Do you agree or disagree? <laughs> I agree. Okay. So we're running, we're, 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 we're getting to the end of our episode here. So we want to have a couple recap of our takeaways. One, don't overwhelm your buyer or your, your the person you're referring to with too many options. Give them one, max two, and let the, the person receiving the referral know a little background about the person so that they know how to approach that yeah. referral. Yeah. That's number one. Number two, set up the right expectations, whether it's about a foreign seller or whether it's about the loan process or whether it's about whatever is the issue that you could predict or just telling them, listen, it ain't over till it's over, right? So we'll, we'll keep you through the process. We'll get you closed, but we need to make sure that, you know, we follow the instructions of other professionals and we need to make sure that you understand that we need a little flexibility sometimes. Mm -hmm. And by giving people that up front, when you ask the flexibility at the end, it's not as big of a blow, right? Correct. And Correct. then remember, FERP does a super technical thing. If you have questions, let me know. If you need a good accountant, let me know. I can recommend you. I'm happy to send that email introduction um, to, the, to you and, and, and uh, to be able to have someone you can call with questions and things like that and refer your clients to and know that they know how to handle it because not all accountants know how to handle um, for up the deals. It's very technical. So Absolutely. with that being said, I think that's a wrap, Anthony. That when's our next, wrap, when's our next, when's our next damage control? We already have it on the calendar. Two Pull weeks. it up in two, two weeks. weeks. Pull up a date. So everyone knows, say the date, people. We're going to have a special guest on our next episode. So stay tuned. We're going to bring in an uh, industry expert for you guys to add a little fl extra flavor to the whole thing. Flavor, flavor, flavor. <laughs> uh, I believe it's the 19th. <clears throat> All right. So the 19th. the 19th. We're going to send it on, on um, Facebook and, and we'll Instagram. post it. We'll add it in the post comments it. in this thread with the details and the link. If you're catching this live or on replay, you'll be able to get the RSVP link. Down Actually, below. It's the 27th. I'm sorry. We made it the 27th on a Friday. We wanted to see, see, we're analyzing. We want to see, you know, who's going to opt in and who's going to join us. Monday's, um, you know, starting the, uh, the week off fresh. It's working Fridays. Let's see if they, they come in on a Friday. So yeah, the 27th is, is it's going to be. Awesome. Cool. And then don't forget, we're open for suggestions. So if you have a suggestion on what you want to hear us talk about, break down, answer a question, we're happy to do that for you guys. Um, and we're going to get better and better at this, I promise you, as, as we go through this. What do this you think? Is where, this is where we're actually uh, posting our questions. We have a Slack channel, and um, we're getting mad amount of questions that are, are on a daily basis. Right now, welcome Vivian. But questions, uh, Title Tip Tuesdays, pretty cool, man. Nice little community. So hopefully you guys join. Thank you for following. Thanks, Melinda. Thanks, Anthony. That's a wrap.